Hello, it's David here, and welcome to another amazing lecture. This time the subject is sales, or selling, or a salesman, or a saleswoman, or a salesperson. And sales itself, selling, is a profession, and often misunderstood one. Because people are, let's face it, conditioned by words and language, you only have to say something and a person will come out with a response, a reaction. So, if you say to someone, I'm a salesman, they go, oh, oh. You're one of those people that perhaps try and extort money out of old ladies by bullying them into buying something like a bed or a hoover or something. And it's not very nice, very pushy and grasping. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. But in fact, uh, selling is a bold, courageous profession where the rewards are very high and if you know what you're doing you can make yourself a nice income but what you have to be able to do is understand what's happening what is the principle of a sell, selling situation a sale what uh, People may think it is, is someone kind of coming along and trying to get you to buy something that you don't want. Now, nothing would be can be further from the truth, because if you were trying to sell something to someone and they don't want it, you're not going to do very well as a salesman. And once you walk away from them, they, they'll just say I don't like this and probably just cancel whatever they they committed to so the really sort of fantastically exciting part of sales is when you're in a direct selling situation so we're not talking about serving what you do in a shop or even a restaurant or anything this is almost routine someone asks for something you go and pick it up and give it to them over the counter what we're talking about is when there's a meeting between you the salesperson and somebody else a decision maker perhaps directors partners of a company and you persuade them to commit to something which is going to cost them a lot of money, thousands of pounds. And there's a technique in doing this, and if you can do it, you'll get a sales job, and companies will hire you, because that's a very good way of them getting business. And if they get business, then they can keep themselves in a job, plus people who are manufacturing the product in a job, and the people who transport the goods around the country, etc., are all in a job as well. So none of that would happen unless someone was actually doing the selling. So selling is something which is a form of persuasion. But what you're not doing is trying to get something some, or someone to do something they don't wish to do. And that's where possibly the misunderstanding comes in because you don't, there shouldn't be any force into, into something. You shouldn't be making someone uncomfortable and force them. But what you have to understand is how to persuade. If you're nice to someone, that doesn't mean you say they'll buy your product. If you try to be witty, funny and doesn't necessarily make make you a good salesperson if you 
bombard someone with specifications about a product, all the technical stuff, they'll just say, I'm lost, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I'll explain um, what happens during a sale and how it can be effective and how you can repeat this. And it's worth knowing. Lots of people call themselves salesmen, saleswomen, but they're not. They don't even know what they're doing. They think it's perhaps just almost shoehorning, bulldozing somebody into something. Can't really work. If it's a consumer, general public, they've always entitled to cancel anything. So if you sold them something they didn't want, they would just cancel and that would be it. And you'd be soon out of a job. So if you are being paid to, for a, com a company wish you to do selling for them, sell the product, then the honest thing to do is do that very thing. Try to get sales because that's what you're getting paid for. More often than not, these jobs can be well paid, but it does require you to make sales. You can't just say, well, I nearly got the sale and I made some new friends or I enjoyed myself or it was great fun touring around the country in my company car. No chance, because that has to be funded by the sales. So if you don't get any sales, no job, and it's a no kidding situation. You can't get half a sale, possibly a sale, nearly a sale. You either make the sale or not, get the person to sign, commit themselves to, could be quite a lot of money. So there is a way, a knack, a way of doing it, and it requires what appears to be mind reading. You use a form of psychological technique called game theory, which is used a lot in politics, geopolitics, where you have to try and predict what the other person's going to do, what their move is. So you have to be able to use a way of understanding them more than they understand themselves. So what is a sale? If you're not forcing someone to spend money they don't have, if you're not forcing someone to part with money kind of by deception, then what are you doing? Well, the answer is you're helping the prospect, which is the person you're selling to, with the decision. And the reason why they need help is because people generally are averse to risk. If they think something could be risky, they will always put off the decision. And if something costs a lot of money, then they'll always say, well, okay, I'm interested, but I'm not going to do it right now. And they'll, they will delay this decision indefinitely. There's no doubt about it. If you just left people to their own devices, they would never buy anything. So what you're doing is giving someone, the prospect, a gentle nudge. You're helping them with a painful decision because it's risky or perceived to be risky and it's going to cost them money. So the easiest thing for them to do is say, oh well, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. But you can't allow them to think about it because that means as soon as you walk out the door, they'll not think about it. They'll just carry on what they're doing and it'll be a relief to them because they're off the hook. So what a sales person's job is to keep the person on the hook and make sure you can get them to decide. The worst that can happen is they just say, no, that's it, I don't want it and don't come back here. But that rarely happens. But what often happens is people say, yeah, I like you, I like the price, I like the product and I'm really happy with this, but I need some time to think about it. So the salesperson's job is to nudge them over that hurdle. And that's what you get a pressure point 
and that's when sales go wrong. That's when someone who's perhaps an amateur starts to get a bit annoyed, almost even aggressive. They're not good salespeople. Somebody else might just say, oh well, it's been great, thanks for all your time, and I'll send you a quote. No chance, you never see, you never get a sale that way. Not how it works. So what you have to do in a sale is gently persuade the person that it's the right thing to do, it's going to be nice and safe, they're not going to be getting anything they don't want, they're going to enjoy the product, they're going to make it, it's going to be very useful to them and when they commit to it, they're happy. It's a relief to say, oh yeah, now, now it's, when can you get it installed? When can, can you get it to me? Because once you make the sale, there's a big sense of relief and the people like you. They become your best friend and they say, can you come round and and try it out and experience it and stuff? Because this is, we're really happy now. So your job is to make them take away the resistance and make them make the decision. And because people are reluctant to make this final decision, they can think of many, many reasons not to buy. And your job is to close all those opportunities away, close all the doors and leave them with only one option. And that is buy, because it's the, it's the only thing to do. So these are the techniques. You use techniques to get them into that nice, comfortable position. And if you do this with skill, careful use of language, careful timing, then you can make regular sales and get yourself good commissions and a good salary. And you get a sense of achievement. But the big fear is that you lose the sale. And then you think, well, who's to blame here? You've only got yourself to answer to. And that's why it's quite a scary and bold profession. Because if you don't get the sale, there's nowhere else to turn you lost it yourself and you've only got yourself to answer to and that can be terrifying.